In our series of core abdominal trunk exercises, we focused on why not to do the crunch and why to focus on some anti-rotation, anti-flexion stuff. After you've got the plank down, you can do it 45 seconds, a minute, a minute and a half. Once that's relatively simple and easy, you need to get to another progression and continue to challenge those muscles. The next move is going to be uh, basically another progression of the plank. Um, basically, you're going to stabilize yourself on something elevated and you're going to do what I like to call a medicine ball walkout plank. It's a little bit um, tough to explain without showing you, which is why video is such a great medium. I've got my medicine ball here that happens to have two handles. That's why I bought it. It's a fantastic medicine ball. But you can use anything else. You can use your couch. You can use something that's a stable surface, but it has to be able to sustain your body weight. Here's why. For the medicine ball walkout plank, you're going to be situated here on the medicine ball. So here's my plank. And now, yeah, I'm in, I'm in camera angle. Good. <laughs> Videography, it's tough doing a one-person job. So when I'm in the top position for the plank, this is pretty easy because I'm used to a plank. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on walking my feet out until I'm creating a giant bridge on my core. And then you're going to walk yourself back in. I'm actually going to ditch my yoga mat because it's sliding underneath me, which makes the move harder. So the yoga mat's going to be gone. Now I'm on the bare carpet. I'm going to have more friction. So you're going to put your medicine ball here or your whatever it is that you're balancing on here. And you're going to start walking your feet out an inch at a time until you start feeling that tension build up in your midsection. and then slowly walk your feet back up. So there's one. Go for reps or go for time in the hold. <clears throat> my voice cracked again because I'm holding my breath. So you're here. Now if I let my midsection go down, see, if you let it go soft, you're going to hit the ground. But who cares? You're only dropping a couple inches. So try to focus on... Now let me try to make an example of, uh, of what I was going to do. Um, Use, use anything that you have. You can use a table. Get on the edge of something. Here. Here's a little bit of a table. My hands here nice and firm. I'm going to walk my feet out. Walk your feet out. Create that gap between your midsection and your hands. And you'll feel this in your triceps and your shoulders and everything. But what's important is you're, you're engaging those core muscles and not letting them go soft. Maintain that nice plank position. That's the second progression. One important thing to know about anti-rotation, anti-flexion stuff, you might start to feel it in your lower back. Chances are it's because your form is a little bit improper or your lower back is just that weak. A lot of people's lower backs are very weak. So when they do maneuvers that are testing the strength of that entire trunk, uh, your abs can take it, but your lower back is the first thing that screams out uncle. It's the first thing that taps out. We want to strengthen that lower back so that it's strong through the entire chain and you're going to start getting really strong abdominals. Your squats are going to get better. Your overhead presses are going to get better because you have such a stronger base. That trunk of yours is going to be so much stronger, you can pile things on top of it and it's not going to have an energy gap. It's going to be stronger. So, if you start to feel it in your lower back, take a step away, relax, rest it out, but your lower back's going to get much stronger and then you're going to be warp speed ahead to get ready to some of the other moves.